governor of Colorado and the governor of North Dakota, two governors that are working very hard, harder than they thought they'd have to work. Uh, we also have two very distinguished senators that you know very much, uh, Senator Gardner, who you know, and John, say hello. Say hello Great to the fake news. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. We uh, appreciate the invitation, and of course, uh, appreciate all the support you're giving us and yeah. the leadership of our governors. Exactly. It's been, uh, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're here for, to do that and to talk about. We just came out with a new listing on testing. We just cracked 10 million tests, which is here. I said you'd like to show that to everybody. 10 million. We set an all-time record by far. If you look down here, uh, these are other countries that have not done anywhere near what we're doing. We double. If you add them up and double them, we've done more tests. But I can't get the press to print that, unfortunately. They just don't want to print it. Uh, but I want to thank uh, the governors for being here very much. Uh, we appreciate it. We're going to have some good, fruitful talks about uh, going even to the next step. And I know you're trying to open up. And I know you're opening up. You're sort of more than trying. You're opening up. And uh, you're both you both doing an excellent job. And it's an honor to have you at the White House very much. And these two gentlemen have done a fantastic job. And David, you know, from Interior. Mm -hmm. And David's very much involved with your state. And uh, how are they doing, David? What do you think? Fantastic. I think so. They're doing a good job. They really are. They're doing a good job. Uh, we're talking about, as you know, uh, Space Force. And a lot of the states are interested in Space Force, and we're talking to some of them. And I know that uh, Colorado is very interested in it. And so we'll be talking to you about that, too. Okay? We might mention that today a little bit during our meeting. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Mr. President, what's your advice to uh, administrators and school principals around the country in terms of their plans to reopen school yeah. and colleges in the fall? Oh, I think they should open the schools, absolutely. I think they should. And it's had very little impact on uh, young people. And I think that if you're an instructor, if you're a teacher, a professor, and you're over a certain age, like, let's say, 65, or maybe even if you want to be conservative, 60, uh, perhaps you want to stay out for a little while longer. But I think you should absolutely open the schools. Our country's got to get back, and it's got to get back as soon as possible. And I don't consider our country coming back if the schools are closed. And it's had very little, very unusual situation. It's had very little impact on young people. And I would strongly say uh, they should open. It's up to the governors. It's the governor's choice. But uh, the estate is not open if the schools aren't open. So again, it's had very little impact on young people. And I think they should open their schools. Mr. President, Senator Graham is introducing a bill to, to sanction China. Uh, would you support it if it goes to the House and it comes to your desk? Um, do you support that bill? Well, I respect Lindsey Graham, and I'll certainly look at it. The bill to sanction China, so I'll certainly take a look at it. I have not seen it yet. Do you want to comment on the release of those names related to... Uh, well, the unmasking is a massive, uh, it's a massive thing. It's, uh, I just got a list. It's, it's, who can believe a thing like this? And I watched Biden yesterday on Good Morning America being interviewed by one of your colleagues, George Stephanopoulos. And he said he knew nothing about anything. He has no idea. He knows nothing about anything. Nothing at all. And then it gets released today that he was a big unmasker. So how do you know nothing if you're one of the unmaskers? It's one of the very big stories. And I suspect you'll have, if it's possible, even bigger stories coming out. And, and could I follow up with, on a separate subject, sir? The, we've had a number of uh, explosions in Afghanistan. But are you concerned that that peace deal may be falling apart? Look, Afghanistan, we've been there for many years. We're like a police force. We're not fighting in Afghanistan. We're a police force in Afghanistan. And at some point, they're going to have to be able to take care of their country. They're going to have to be able to police their country. But uh, we're not meant to be a police force. We're meant to be fighters. And we've been there for a long time. So I don't know. We'll have to see it. I have not heard that, Steve. We have had, uh, in Kabul, we've had some uh, I understand some pretty big blow-ups. Yes. But, uh, again, you count on a government to be able to police themselves, and they're having a hard time, I, I suspect. But, again, we are the greatest fighting force in the world. We're not a police force that's going to stay around and police the streets and check out the red lights and traffic. It's not what we're supposed to be doing. Been there a long time. Uh, you know, our forces down 
quite a bit, as you know. We're way down. And a lot of people have come back, brought them back. But uh, the government has to be able, at some point, to do something for themselves. Okay? Mr. <laughs> President, Chairman Powell, Powell they, today, Chairman Powell today said both that he wasn't interested in bringing interest rates negative and that he saw uh, a need for additional stimulus from Congress. Yeah. I know that you said that we could wait and see on the stimulus and that you you want negative rates, so I was wondering your reaction. Well, I'm a believer in negative rates only if other countries that are competitors. Look, Germany, uh, they're an ally, they're friends of ours, but they're still competitors on trade and other things. So uh, Germany, Japan, others have negative rates, and I think if they do, we're, we're the most prime of the world. You know, we're, it's based, many countries, based on the dollar. The dollar is by far the strongest, most powerful currency in the world. We've made it more powerful. We've made it stronger. And certainly, if they're going to have the advantage of negative rates, we should, too. I feel strongly we should have negative rates. Negative rates is basically where they pay you interest if you borrow money. This is a new one. I've been looking for something like that all my life. That's a pretty good one. But certainly, if other countries are going to be paid for putting out money, I mean, they're — think of it. They're borrowing money, and instead of paying interest, they're getting paid. It's the craziest thing. But you know what? Other countries are doing it. Look at Germany. Look at Japan. Look at others. And we're the most prime in the world right now. And we have the, we have the currency, and we have, we have the power of the dollar. So uh, I know that the Chairman has — and he's done a very good job over the last couple of months. I have to tell you that, because I've been critical. But uh, in many ways, I call him my MIP. Do you know what an MIP is? Most Improved Player. It's called the Most Improved Player Award. Did you ever get one of them when you were playing baseball, Corey? Good baseball Certainly player? Certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, chairman, he's uh, my MIP right now for the last uh, few months. I think he's done a very good job. I disagree with him on one thing now, and that's uh, negative rates. And only because we're paying zero. Good news, with this money you're talking about and the stimulus, we're paying zero. We're down to zero interest. That's good. But some country, countries and some uh, states, rather, and some also countries, you look at. But we are, we are paying right now zero, and other countries are paying less than that, if you can believe it. They're receiving money. And I think we should be in the exact same situations. And by the way, states are getting tremendous deals in borrowing. So a lot of the states that are coming to the federal government, they can go out and they can borrow, and they're getting phenomenal rates. Some of our states is what I'm talking about. They're getting phenomenal borrowing rates. But you agree that stimulus should move forward? There's been some Republicans who suggest that, that they should I don't know. It depends. I, it's certainly not the package that I saw today. Basically, if you look at that package, what they want more than anything else is uh, it's a voting package. They want to be able to make sure that Republicans can't win an election by putting in all sorts of uh, uh, mailing ballots. Now, I don't know if you do, because the press doesn't report this too much, but we had two very big victories last night. We won very big. Tom Tiffany won very big in the great state of Wisconsin. You saw that. That was uh, last night it came in. That was a big one. You saw that, Doug. And uh, won by a very, very substantial margin. And in California, of all places, we had a fantastic race. And this was all mail-in ballots. This was all uh, mailed ballots. And when they saw, because it was mailed, they saw they were losing three days ago. And they ended up putting polling booths in, into basically Democrat <laughs> areas. Uh, but despite that, it's looking like Mike Garcia. I don't know if they've called the race yet, but he was substantially ahead. That's the problem with mail-in ballots. Are, are they going to dump a whole pile of ballots on your desk just before the election? So the problem with the mail-in ballots, it's subject to tremendous uh, corruption. Tremendous corruption. Cheating. So, so and so I'm, I'm against it. And if you look at the bill that Nancy Pelosi is putting in, it has a lot to do with elections. And then we're not going to we're not going to lose elections because of that. Is that still a non-starter? And I do think you should mention the fact that the Republicans won two major congressional seats last night. I think it's really worthy of mentioning. Is that Mr. President, do you believe that the judge presiding over the Mike Flynn case well, let's finish with your question. Okay. Is that bill a non-starter? Is there anything in there you could support? Or? Well, it's, uh, as they say, DOA, right? Okay. DOA, okay. dead on arrival. 
Mr. President. Mr. President. Of course, Nancy Pelosi knows that, you know, obviously. Thank you, Mr. President. Do you believe that the judge presiding over the Michael Flynn case, uh, Emmett Sullivan, ought to recuse himself or be disqualified for being biased against Mr. Flynn? I was just with General Milley and some other generals, and I asked him about General Flynn. Do you know him? They said, yes, sir, I've known him for 20 years. What do you think? He's an incredible man, an incredible soldier. He's an incredible general. This is General Milley, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, four-star. Uh, he's done fantastically. He thinks General Flynn is a great, great gentleman and a real fighter. And when I see what is happening to him, it's disgraceful. And it was all a ruse. And by the way, the FBI said he didn't lie. The FBI said he did not lie. So with all the stuff I'm hearing about lying, the FBI said he didn't lie. But the uh, sleazebag said, well, we don't care what, he, what they say. We're saying he lied. Okay, but the FBI, you remember when they left, they said he didn't lie. What they've done to that man and that family is a disgrace. But I just tell you that because I just left General Milley and he said, a great man and a great soldier. Would you consider a pardon, a pardon for Mr. Flynn? I won't talk about that, but he's going to be okay. And he's going to be the, just fine. What about the judge? And I'm very, very uh, saddened by what's happening to General Flynn and others. I want to tell you right now, and others. Please. Dr. Dr. Fauci yesterday was a little cautious on reopening the economy too soon. Uh, do you share his concerns? About reopening what? Re reopening the economy too soon, some states. Look, he wants to play all sides of the equation. Uh, I think we're going to have a tremendous fourth quarter. I think we're going to have a transitional third quarter. And I think we're going to have a phenomenal next year. I feel that we are going to have a country that's ready to absolutely have one of its best years. Ne next year, with all of the stimulus and all of the fact that it's a, it's a pent-up demand like I haven't seen. And you see it right now. Uh, these two really professional, good governors that do such a, you know, work so hard. I know both of them very well. One happens to be a Democrat, okay? But we've worked together, and I think we've worked together very well. Uh, and one, you would expect me to say that, but it happens to be true, okay? Really good job, too. But we've worked very, very well together. Uh, they want to get their states open. Some governors and some perhaps partisans, maybe for election reasons, don't want to have their states open. And then some shouldn't open them quite yet. You know, they're not ready. They went through a lot, and they're not quite ready. But no, uh, we're opening our country. People want it open. The schools are going to be open. I was uh, seeing the other day Purdue, a great school, great college, university. And uh, Purdue is opening, and others are opening, and they're all announcing it. These are young people. These are students, young students. They're in great shape. They're in great shape. Now, will you have an incident, one out of a million, one out of 500? That Will something happen, perhaps? But, you know, you can be driving to school and some bad things can happen, too. So, no, we're going to open our country. Sorry, we Mr. want President, it open. When you say Dr. Fauci is playing both sides, are you suggesting that the advice well, he's given to you is, is I was different. surprised by his answer, actually, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, it's just to me, it's not an acceptable answer, especially when it comes to schools. The only thing that would be acceptable, as I said, is professors, teachers, etc., over a certain age. I think they ought to take it easy for another few weeks, five weeks, four weeks, who knows, whatever it may be. But I think they have to be careful because this is a, a disease that attacks age and it attacks health. And if you have a heart problem, if you have diabetes, if you're a certain age, uh, it's certainly uh, much more dangerous. But with the young children, I mean, uh, and students, it's really, it's uh, just take a look at the statistics. It's pretty amazing. Mr. President, businesses are concerned about getting sued once they reopen. Will you be insistent on some sort of shield from liability being in yeah. a phase? If anything's bill? done, I would do that. And these are the new testing numbers, so you saw that. But I was just showing this to a group of people outside. We're now over 10 million tests, or we will be very shortly, like within a couple of days. Look at that test. This is us. This is the rest of the world, okay? We have more tests, and we have better tests, John. 
We have more tests and we have better tests. And we're going to have your football team in, your championship football team. Boys. Right? <laughs> and we were the bison. And uh, tell us a little bit about the team, first of all. You know, they won the championship, and we were all set to have them. And uh, what happened is the plague came in. And because of the plague, came in from China. And because of the plague, we didn't have those great people. Well, we'll do a rain check, okay? But seriously, even if it's in a few months, we'll do a rain check. Tell them about the team, because it was a tremendous season. Well, I'll just say that the team and uh, Senator Hoven was here, Senator Kramer was here, the whole Fidel, but uh, the First Lady was here, she says hi. Yeah. Uh, but Good. you hosted them last year because right. they, uh, again, won the national championship this year in January, and this is the eighth out of ninth year in a row they've done that, and uh, they would uh, love to get back here with the rain check. So I watched the game on television, the championship game. I didn't know too much about it. I don't get to watch too much of the television football games, right? And I'm saying, man, that team is really good. They were really good. And then I got a call from Doug, and I get a call from John. And I get a call from our other very friendly senator, right? The three of them. And they said, do you think we could possibly uh, honor the team? Because we honor the national champion. And my question was, how would your team do against the national champions? They were pretty good. LSU this year, right? Not a bad quarterback. Huh? Yep. How do you think? I don't know. You think you think okay, right? We open up against Oregon yep. next year at Oregon. Wow. So then we'll be able to answer your question. That's pretty good. That great be... LSU quarterback started his career playing flag football in elementary school in Fargo, North Dakota. So wow. that's where he got his start. Dad so. coached him. Got a good start. Yeah. yeah. Girls, dad coached him. We'll let the team know we're going to do a rain check. Yep. Okay. Fantastic. Mr. Okay. President. Mr. President. Yeah. Here, uh, what will happen to the public companies that don't return their PPP loans to the SBA by tomorrow's deadline? Well, we'll go after them very seriously. Yeah. If there's any companies that got loans that they weren't entitled to, we'll go after them very seriously. They'll have big problems. Mr. President, what's your level of confidence that the Supreme Court will ultimately rule in your favor in the case involving your tax returns? I hope they will. I mean, look, it's. Uh, you have a, a situation where a president has to be able to focus on this. And, you know, when you're doing an audit, who would give? You know, in the old days, no president gave tax returns a while ago. I mean, no president gave tax returns. But when you're under audit, who would, who would want to give them? It's a very big thing. But it would also take time. It would take — and this — people are going to get — ultimately, people are going to be getting returns. They're going to see that. But uh, I think — you know, I think it went very well yesterday. I thought it was — I have great respect for the Supreme Court. And I think uh, the lawyers put out a very strong case. And from what I've read, it was a very strong case. Yeah, please. Uh, how long do you and the Vice President plan to stay apart, distantly? Well, it's an interesting question. I haven't seen Mike Pence, and I miss him. But uh, he was in the room with somebody that tested positive. And he did not test positive. He tested uh, the opposite. He's in good shape. Uh, but uh, I guess we said for a little while we'll stay apart, because you don't know what happens with this very crazy and horrible disease. Uh, but uh, we speak a lot on the phone. But I'm in the White House. Mike is at his office, but he's, you know, pretty much away from people. He's doing a great job. He's done a great job, I think you'd say, on the task force. He really has. I think uh, you've pretty much gotten everything you wanted, and we try and get it to you quickly. Yeah, we talk to the Vice President regularly. Right. Yeah, yeah. They've done a — we've worked very well together with, uh, with Republican governors and with Democrat governors. And when are you thinking of opening uh, — and explain what you're going to yeah, do? Yeah, we're — Doug, I'm going to ask you. We're, we're — most, most, most businesses are open in Colorado. Pretty much everything except for those social businesses like right. bars and nightclubs. Uh, a few places have restaurants open. We're working on the rest soon. But offices, manufacturing, right. salons, pretty much all people are back at in a, in, a, in a safer way, right? It's not the same way it was. Like, uh, if you go — I got my hair cut the other day. It looks good. Thank you. You should have seen it before. I like I was. It was crazy. What little is left of it. Not bad, not bad. Um, so, you know, they wore a mask. I wore a mask. So we, we're doing it in a safe way. Um, all the stores are back, and, and April 27th, we were one of the states where we wanted to do that in a safe way. People are being responsible. I mean, you know, and, and it's that individual responsibility that's going to make sure that we can stay on this trajectory, and, and hopefully hopefully restaurants in May, by the end of May. I mean, they're already open in a few places in our How state. How about — because I go there, mm -hmm. as you know, and the ski slopes are fantastic, yeah. right? 
There are those that say the greatest uh, anywhere. How are you doing with the skiing? And, you know, it's a big yeah. business for you. You know, it's a big business. It's also one of the way reasons that we got a lot of the virus in our state, because people come from all over the world, right. all over the world. I've heard that. And so that's what led to the spread. And so uh, most of the ski season is ending, but we're actually hopeful. We have, a lot of people don't know this, but in Colorado, we have a few areas that they're skiing through July 4th. And, and we're hoping that people will be able to ski again. David knows this, Secretary Bernhardt knows this, uh, in Arapahoe Basin, Wolf Creek, um, maybe Breckenridge, Loveland in June. We're hoping that people can actually and ski again. And you also again. do a lot of uh, summer business and springtime business. And what are you doing with that? You know, it's we're really respecting the, the communities in our state because they have a lot at stake. Nobody is more at stake than, if, in fact, Jill Ryan, who's with us from uh, Eagle, she, she's our Secretary of Health in Colorado. She was a commissioner in Eagle County, which is where right. Vail is. Right. So they have the most at stake, for, at stake economically and from a health perspective. So, you know, we're really respecting what the different communities decide. I think, I think there'll be some folks that are coming back, spending money in stores. There'll be other communities that say, you know what, we have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, and it's been very traumatic for many of those communities because Eagle County, for a while, had the highest infection rate in the country early yeah, on. That. Yeah, early on. Um, so and now there's they, people coming because everyone yeah. goes, everyone coming in. Yeah. How has that been? How is the uh, level of infection right now? Eagle County's done an amazing job, as has Summit County, Pitkin County, Aspen, you know, right, all those sure. areas. They've gotten it under control because they, they acted early. They have great county health departments. They look at the science. They look at the data. Um, their residents stayed home. And in fact, Eagle County was one of the first in our state, along with Mesa County, which uh, Secretary Bernhardt knows well, Grand Junction area, to be able to open up a little bit ahead of some of the other areas in a safer way, right? In a safer way. Yeah. Um, so like in, in Grand Junction, the restaurants are at 25% capacity, so there's space. We're looking at ways that people can dine outdoors, sidewalks, and, and even on a lane of the road because it's safer to be in that environment. So those are the kinds of things that we think about as we're just trying to get back to as much normalcy as we can. And Corey, you're working together very much, I know, with the governor and everybody else. We do. Uh, we speak regularly. Uh, the governor's done a good job, and I appreciate that, and here to help uh, as much as we can. One of the things we did um, that uh, Corey uh, introduced us to and worked on was importing some tests from South right. Korea. So we have over, they're already being used in our right. state. Uh, we're also partnering with the vice president and you on uh, some Thermo Fisher tests that we think are coming very soon. We're getting, right. I think, 95,000. I was told they're here and Good. they're getting them very quickly. Good, we're excited because uh, we're running through those tests yeah. from, South, from South Korea. But um, th that's what's so important, it's the supplies, right? It's the, we have the ability to do it. Uh, the labs to do it. You guys sent around the labs. We, we have the capacity, but it's getting the tests in. And so, you know, both with the Thermo Fisher tests, the Abbott tests, the Solgen tests, um, we're, we're mixing and matching across. We have 32 free community testing sites across our state. Some of them you drive in, some of them you walk in, but those are free. And that's in addition to the hospitals and doctor's offices. Right. Of course, you get tested right. there. But we have 32 free community testing sites in different states. And you're good to health care in that state. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Mr. President, so I think the, the key that Jared has talked about, the governor's talked about is uh, you have counties that, that have a plan that they're able to open up uh, earlier than others because of the work that they're doing. And so when, when the governor's talking about uh, Grand Junction, you have restaurants that aren't just open, but you have dine-in right, uh, in dine some in. of these restaurants, which I think is uh, maybe Where? some of the first around the country to actually mm -hmm. reopen to dine-in because of the good work that uh, they have done together. And then we wanted to, you know, for our restaurants were open throughout this whole period in our state. Right. They, they just did delivery, they did takeout, they did curbside, and we even waived some of the laws so they could sell alcohol curbside right. and sell alcohol delivery because that extra piece can make the difference between them staying in business How do or they not. do? How do those restaurants do with the takeout? Uh, you know, you'll talk, hear from some that are doing okay with it. It doesn't work for every restaurant, and that's why we, you know they need to be open for the right. in-restaurant dining. But for many of them, it's paid their bills, and they've gotten through it, and it's helped right. them. Good not idea. not every restaurant, but I hear those stories that it's helped them get through right. it, that we've been able to make sure they've been able to stay in business the whole right. time. Right. And then yesterday we talked uh, as well about Colorado's additional Thermo Fisher test, yep. and uh, that'll be a very big help uh, to get those. That's a great state. test. Yeah. That's a new and a great test. So, Doug, how about North Dakota? How you doing? Well, first I want to just lead with gratitude and say thank you to you for your leadership and the Vice President, Dr. Burks, and the whole team. Uh, it's been a great partnership, uh, federal to state to local in North Dakota. And secondly, I you know, wanted to say to the thanks to all the great people in North Dakota because, uh, yeah. like Jared in Colorado, I mean, we, we relied a lot on individual responsibility, light touch from government, and had great, great results. And here we sit today, we're 
number two in the nation. We passed New York this week in terms of testing per capita. Right. So we've really driven in. We've tested over 6% of the population. And you're using different tests, uh, all different, and you're in good shape with the testing. What tests are you using? Well, r this has all been the PCR, the nucleic acid testing, right. and it's been across a number right. of different platforms, Thermal Fisher, Abbott, right. uh, Panther, and so we've got a variety of different platforms, but most of it driven through our state lab, which has had an order of magnitude increase. So we've gone to th three shifts a day, and each shift is doing more than three times they did before, so a 10x uh, increase. Uh, going on there on the testing That's fantastic. side, and then we're the fifth lowest positivity rate in the country. So we've been, uh, you know, Alaska and Hawaii are ahead of us, but we've been uh, right at the bottom in terms of that. You take those two things together. So why do you attribute? What do you attribute that to? Well, I would say uh, we, very early on, being a good governor. Right? Well, it's, you know, ge geography helps, and uh, and the people, of the state help those two things. But I'd say we took early action to try to reduce transmissible moments. So we kept 93% of the jobs in the state open, but the 7% we closed was in bars and restaurants and personal care businesses. Everybody else kept going, all the construction, all of energy, all of ag, uh, including all of elective surgery at hospitals, kept that going. Oh, wow, that's and fantastic. we were because we never ran, we, we were well stocked, we had a great right. medical cash that's and great. we never took more than 2% of our, our capacity in healthcare. We have a lot of great healthcare providers in North Dakota. Only two percent were going to COVID. That's fantastic. And so we, we we were we were able to then drive through that. I mean, we handled the virus and really focused. And we got Michelle Comer here, who leads our commerce department. Uh, we had have less to worry about opening up because we never really closed down. But on that other seven percent, we got bars, restaurants, personal care businesses open on May first, and all that's going very well under new operating procedures that everybody's using to stay to, to stay safe. And your oil prices are going up a little bit now, so that you're $26, $27 a barrel. And uh, pretty soon you'll be up to the number that you have to be up to. That's uh, yeah. a big difference. Well, absolutely, because I mean, what we do in North Dakota is we power the world, we feed right. the world, number right. two oil producer, producing state in the nation. And, uh, and a lot of the unemployment that we saw early on wasn't related to the virus, it was related to the demand destruction That's associated right. with the oil price That's drop. Right. Great job. John, what do you have to say about the state and the job the governor and everybody else has done? Listening, I know it well. Yeah, listening to these two governors, I was a governor for a long time, tells me your approach is the right approach. You're working with the governors across this country and empowering them to open up as soon as they can safely based on the conditions in their state. And every state's different. And that's why that approach is so important. And then you providing all that support along with us in Congress with the CARES Act, you know, as well. But you see that now with North Dakota, with Colorado, and across the country. So that's why it's so important that you're doing it the way that you're doing it with these great governors yeah. that we have across the state. So we well. thank you for that. And the other thing I want to mention is for our farmers, you know I work a lot on ag. Yes. But for our farmers and ranchers, you've been there for them and hang in there with them. They're doing a whale of a job, yeah. and they're so important, and our energy industry too. And we're sending them billions of dollars of uh, money that we took in from a uh, country that targeted them. Last year we gave them 16 billion, the year before we gave them 12 billion, and no other president would have done that, I can tell you. And it's really important and appreciated, and we need to hang in there with them. And the only other thing I gotta tell you is we have a great governor, as you know, but he is so data-driven that I was teasing uh, Dr. Burks, who's more data-driven? These two are she amazing. Is. They're amazing together. You gotta say, it's, they're just amazing. When That's great. Together. Michelle, do you have anything to say? Well, it's been a privilege to work for Governor Bergen. I think it's through his wisdom that, you know, we've talked a lot about lowering the curve, but as right. Governor Bergen pointed out, we didn't close the state, so I feel like we, so great. we raised the bottom. And we've had the, the good fortune to work very, very closely with our business community, and it's through that process and the open dialogue and the collaboration and the hyper-connectedness in our state that we were able to build our, what we call North Dakota Smart Restart Protocols with our business community over the span of about eight days. And so we were closed for 40 days and 40 nights, and we are opening in a safe way. That's fantastic. We're really proud of the work that's yeah, happened there. You've done a great job. Thank you very much. You. And just to finish off, go ahead. Well, hi. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to... Um, thank the federal government for its partnership on our COVID-19 response and particularly um, the supplies you've given us, the tests, and uh, look forward to that continuing. Thank and you, you know, uh, the more people we can test and then we can force multiply that mm -hmm. with contact tracing so we can quarantine people that haven't even had a test yet, 
Uh, that's really, you know, the way that we're going to contain the virus in Colorado. We've uh, got a local public health department that covers every county, and they are ready to do testing and contact tracing. And so that's our plan. That's it's great. going to be a statewide effort. Well, thank you very much. Terrific job, too. And while we're here, I want to also say Secretary Bernhardt doing a fantastic job because we had a chance to interact with him on uh, national parks. We had great things going on in the Theodore Roosevelt National Park as we move ahead with the Theodore Roosevelt Presidential right. Library. That's right. and we've got the U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, BLM. Uh, we've been great partners working with the five tribal nations that are headquartered in North Dakota with whom we share geography and we've done great collaboration with those tribal leaders on testing through COVID. Uh, but I just want to thank the Secretary. They've had a lot of difficulty in the different tribes, haven't yeah. they? They have. A lot of difficulty. Sorry. Tremendous I want to thank the Secretary and BIA and for all their support as well through David, all this. David, you've done a great job. Uh, do you feel comfortable with all those cameras right behind your head? So, um, you know, you, you gave me clear direction to, to work with governors to open things up. We work with local communities. Our parks, my goal is that we're right, right on the shoulder of the governor. Um, uh, we've worked with Larimer County and uh, Health Department and Estes Park um, to, to bring that online. We've, we've opened up uh, Theodore Roosevelt and we're, um, we just announced today the, uh, the timing of the opening for Yellowstone. So we're moving So forward. you get into those parks open, right? Absolutely. So I hope everybody's listening. The parks are opening They're and rapidly actually. With, with those governors. Right. And with those governors. You want the help from the governors. And, and even with the counties. More Absolutely. Than they, even with within the, county. the state. And you know, I, we're all excited because recreating outdoors is safe and healthy. Yeah. The flip side is we're not yet ready to have all the people from other states okay. and other countries and coming in. So that's the with balance, those local you know. communities to ramp so up. So in all cases, you're working with governors and opening the and, and local towns. That's Absolutely. Great. That's great. Great job. Thank you. Good neighbor. Thank you very much, everybody. How do you increase the confidence in the American public to go travel? on America's airlines right now. They have now. great confidence, and they have great confidence in us, and they have great confidence in the airlines. We've saved the airlines with $25 billion and another $25 billion. And uh, we have airlines that are now in good shape. I mean, they obviously, they're going to pick up with the fares and with the seats. Uh, but uh, the airline industry is in good shape. We've been able to save the airline industry, which is would have been devastating if that happened. So uh, they're in good shape. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Russ. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.